Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about firmware updates and specifically the new updates for the Ronin S as well as the Ronin SC. Now it's been a while since I've done one of these videos because there hasn't really been anything released. However, today DJI have pushed out two big ones and in this video I'm going to walk you through the basics of these updates, what's included, as well as talk about some specific points because there are a few things that have changed especially with the new app and I'm just going to try and give you guys the info on that so you're not wondering what these are and where they've gone. Now before I get into it if you've noticed my background looks like it's fallen down I've actually had to take it down because I'm in the middle of doing a refit of the workshop so please ignore that messy bit up there in a couple of weeks we will all be back to normal looking shiny and new. Now before I get into the video please do subscribe to the channel if you find this video helpful. There's a button in the bottom right hand corner somewhere down by there. There are also links to the Ronin SC as well as the Ronin S in the description of this video as well. If you'd like to support me and the channel please do check them out. You're able to order your DJI Ronin S and the accessories from these. Okay, so to get started, we're first of all going to talk about the update for the Ronin SC. Now, these are big updates and I'm not going to go over every single detail because there is a lot in there. However, there is a link to the release notes in the description of this video as well, so please do check it out. But I'm going to give you a basic overview. Now, the update for the Ronin SC is version 1.1.0.0. Now, it's worth remembering that the SC has an all new method of updating the firmware. To get this firmware, you need to do it via the Ronin S app on your phone. You simply turn your gimbal on, connect your phone up and it will prompt you when you open the app in the top corner that there is new firmware available. You simply click that, let it download and then it will transfer it to the gimbal via Bluetooth. As it's updating your mode switch will flash just like it does when your motors are paused and then it will reset the gimbal and it's all ready to go. This update method though is only for the SC. The original Ronin S you still have to update that via Assistant for Ronin on either your PC and Mac. Anyway, the update for the Ronin SC. Um, they've added some improvements on the camera models. They've added support for the Sony A6000 series when using the Type-C cable. They've added support for the Canon EOS RP when using the Type-C cable as well. One of the big things people have been waiting for for a while is now commander support. And the commander, which I've got mounted on my Ronin S, now works on the Ronin SC. So if you have had one and it hasn't been working, the reason was the firm we wasn't ready for it. However, today it's done so you can use the commander on both models. Alongside that, they've also overhauled the communications protocols within the gimbals and that means that it's now able to work with the Ronin 2 RC as well as the DJI Pro receiver. Now this actually stands for both gimbals and this new feature is available on those products today. You can download the new firmware for them and you can now use them to control your Ronin SC as well as your Ronin S. Another nice new feature that they have added to the SC is a quick way of getting into 3D roll. Originally you had to physically program one of your mode buttons to use it, however they've now added the ability to get in by simply tapping the mode button three times and it will push the gimbal straight into 3D roll and it means you don't have to use up one of your valuable memory slots. Alongside that They've also added the option for auto 3D roll, just like we have on the S. So when you're in it, you can now tap to the side twice and the gimbal will continue to roll for you automatically. And you can then simply tap the trigger twice and then it will stop in the vertical position. So it's nice that they have added that quick access to 3D roll as well as the auto 3D roll option on the trigger as well. Something new and specific for the Ronin SC is called Advanced Calibration and DJI have added this for people who are finding that their roll axis is moving out of alignment when they centre the gimbal pointing forward. So if you have been having this issue there is a new Advanced Calibration option under the system status and it allows you to do that and that should prevent your gimbal roll going off when you're trying to use it in normal use. 
Another small thing that they've added for the Ronin SC is a new motor overload warning. Now, the S has had this, I think, for a while. Now, they've added it on the SC as well. And I think a few people are going to probably be seeing this quite a lot because I have seen people pushing the limits on the SC of how much it can handle. And it appears DJI know that as well. And they've now added a motor overload warning to say to you, look, you're pushing it. You're not going to get the best performance out of the gimbal. There are a whole host of other things that they've done as well, as I mentioned, including optimise the way autofocus works on pretty much most of the cameras. And alongside that, they've added an ability for you to play back your footage on your camera screen when the gimbal's connected by pressing a button and it basically disconnects the gimbal quickly for you to allow your camera to play back. Um, one other thing I want to mention before I move on to the Ronin S is there is a new thing that they've done on both of these in the app, which allows you to adjust just the focus sensitivity on a slider and I'm going to talk about that in the app section because alongside this firmware there is a new app as well and there's a bit to talk about in that too. Moving over to the Ronin S. Now the version of firmware is version 1.4.0.30. Now before I mention it I am going to get it out this straight away. There is no support for Active Track or Force Mobile in this update. They are working on it. It is going to be coming, as I understand it, at some point. However, they are still optimizing it and it isn't time yet. However, in this update, what we do have is support for the A6400 and A9 from Sony. And what I mean by that is they've added support the same as it does on the A7 version 3. So it means you've got the option of using autofocus with the one cable or using the start stop record on the other. They've also added support for the EOS RP and they've also added M50, 6D and 80D support or improved it as well. They've also added Canon G9 as well as S1 support officially and they have now brought some new support for Fuji users. The X-T2 as well as the X-T3 have the ability for still image capture. Now we don't have video recording yet but watch this space. My, I believe we might have something on that in the very near future. Just like on the Ronin SC, it's got the support for the Ronin 2 remote as well as the DJI Pro receiver. So that's been added to the S as well as the SC2. And that's pretty much all of the main features. There is a lot of other stuff that they've put in there as well. And again, I suggest you check the notes out uh, yourself when you've got a bit of time because there is a bit, but that is the big ones. Now, there is also a number of other changes that have gone on here too and that is specifically with the app because they have updated the app to version 1.2.2 and there are quite a few little changes in this one that you will notice and specifically they've moved some things around. So what I'm going to do now is just show you a couple of the changes that I've come across. Now the home screen looks exactly the same as it does before however you will find things have changed slightly when you go in to create and you will notice that motion lapse is missing and the reason for that is they've now combined that with time lapse so time lapse is now an all-in-one option rather than simply just being time lapse or motion lapse it's a single feature that you can use and you can do it simply as you did before but they have actually improved the whole interface and it all looks a little bit better and I've actually been playing with this tonight and in my opinion it's actually much improved as you can see as I move my gimbal around on the screen you can see that the camera moves you've got the options for waypoints which I've got two of so I'm going to delete that one delete that one. So if I didn't want to use it as motion lapse and just do time lapse, you have no waypoints on it and it will simply do it. However, if you want to then do it as motion lapse, you can simply move the gimbal into the position either via the on-screen joystick, which you've got the option of using. You can use push pan with the ability to turn that on and off down the bottom, or you can use the joystick on the front of your gimbal as well. You then put it in the correct position you want it, hit the plus button, and then it adds a one point there and then you can move it to the next position, hit a plus point and it adds another one there. Now you will notice that the waypoint remaining has increased as I've done it. I think there's actually a little bit of a bug here and you'll notice that as you add them, the number actually goes up rather than counts down. And there is a limit. You can actually only go to five and it says maximum waypoints reached. And I can't add any more, but it's actually counting the wrong way, which is a bit of a strange one. 
But the most important thing about this is motion lapse and time lapse have now been moved into one app. Um, another feature you'll notice on this is for the control for the focus modes. Now, this only comes up when you have your camera connected and a new option in this create menu appears and it's called camera settings. And when your camera is connected to your gimbal, you simply click on the camera settings and the first thing it will do is show you what your camera is currently set to with regards to your ISO and things like that. And it gives you the ability to set the manual controls if you stick it in that mode. But if you slide down to the bottom, you've now got a slider control that allows you to adjust the sensitivity on the manual focus control. So whereas before they did give you some settings, now you've got a full-on manual slider that allows you to adjust how sensitive the manual focus control is on the gimbal. And that again is hidden under the create menu and camera settings when you go into it. Pretty much everything else is the same on the app. The only other thing I'm going to show you is that new calibration feature for the Ronin SC specifically. And as I said earlier, to get to that, you go into status. And if you are getting some drift on your roll axis, you can go into the advanced calibration mode and it'll allow you to do that calibration and that should solve the problem for you. And that is pretty much it for this video. To update your Ronin S, you simply need to download the Assistant for Ronin, which is available from the DJI website. Again, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video. For the SC, you simply need to connect your phone, your app, and it will do it all for you. Much easier, much simpler. I was hoping that would come to the S, but we haven't seen it yet. As I've said in the description of this video, there are links to both of these as well, if you'd like to support the channel, as well as links to the release notes as well. So if you want to go check check them out, please do go follow those links. That's it. Please do subscribe and I will do another video again soon. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other videos we have available. They are also split into playlists to help you easily find the ones that are relevant to you. If you would like to support the channel, please check out the links that are in the description for each video. You will find the links for the products we've been talking about and it's only by you guys purchasing via these links that allows us to keep making videos and buy products to talk about in the future. Please also check us out and follow us on all of the social media platforms such as Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We're beginning to build these accounts up and whilst it is early days, I would appreciate it if you would like, share and follow us on these platforms. Finally, please also check out my website, www.madrc.com. Now, this is somewhere that we've been putting some of our blog posts and things like that over the last couple of years. So if you're interested in having a look, please do go check it out. That is it. Please do click that subscribe button. Thank you very much. And I will do another video again soon.